made up of many moments, some great like the birth of children, the death of loved ones, and some tiny like finding a penny in the parking lot and putting it in your pocket for good luck. Now some of these tiny moments take on a life of their own and they keep on informing us throughout the years. I found that I have very little control over which moments these are, but this is one. This is a true story of something absolutely trivial that changed my life. When I came out to Los Angeles to be an actor, it was all so impossible. I couldn't get a job, I couldn't get an agent, I couldn't even work for free. <laughs> I performed at one show where I had to pay the producer $100. <laughs> and it was not money well spent. <laughs> Opening night, there was no one in the audience. But on the bright side, I made friends with a lot of other struggling actors. And one of them was friends with the new coach of the Los Angeles Lakers, Pat Riley. The Lakers had made it into the playoff that year, and my friend got me a ticket to sit with him on the 10th row to watch the playoff game. I was in heaven. <laughs> my car was a dented Oldsmobile that was on its last legs. It had no heater. The windshield wipers didn't work. The front window was of the hand crank variety. It was stuck in the down position. <laughs> Not completely down. There was, there was about one inch of window sticking up but it was certainly no protection from the elements. Whenever I had to drive, the only thing I had to keep me warm was the rock and roll on the radio. It was freezing that night on the way to the forum. I switched the radio from Shake It Up by the cars to the game. It was 15 minutes until game time. I pulled behind a long line of cars headed into the parking arena, and that's when I noticed I was not alone. There was a big moth fluttering in the car around my face. I swatted at it to encourage it to go out of the permanently open window, but it flew into only the very small room that was rolled up. I spoke to the moth in quiet but authoritative tones. I said, go on, go on, get out of here, get. It was now 10 minutes before the tip off, but the line of cars I was behind had not budged. I stuck my head out the window and yelled, hey, let's go, come on. I honked once, got back into the car, moth fluttered around my head, and again I tried to knock it out of the window. And again, it kept going into that bottom inch of the window over and over again, missing the entire window. And I muttered, you stupid, idiotic moth, you are a moron. <laughs> The radio started introducing the players. Now, I was in a panic. There had to be some sort of problem up ahead. Maybe someone didn't have change. Maybe the parking lot was full. I started honking my horn and yelled, come on, come on, move it, move it. The moth tried to fly up my nose. And again, I said, moth, moth, you have the entire window. It is completely open. Go, or I will kill you. <laughs> I've often talked tough to insects. <laughs> the game started. I screamed. I finally got out of my car to see what was going on, and I saw, to my horror, I had been waiting in a line of heart to <laughs> I've totally done that. I had been honking and yelling at no one. <laughs> Upon further examination, there wasn't even a gate up ahead. <laughs> the entrance to the arena was only a product of my wishful thinking. The moth flew into the window once again, and then I saw it. In that one moment, the moth and I, we were exactly the same. <laughs> we couldn't see the open window. I couldn't see I was behind a line of parked cars. It was all a matter of point of view. <laughs> Since then, there have been many walls that have been thrown at me. Hardships, setbacks, but because of my friend the moth, I learned that a wall may not be a wall. From a different angle, it could be a bridge. And that's the way the world teaches us to see with new eyes. <laughs>